bear faces Betty eyes on the car pulling out of the driveway. You can just see a little girl with a backpack and a man in a business suit leaving the house. The women back their station wagon over the edge of the lawn and roared off. Papa Bear was sure the house was finally empty. He moved softly and his son instantly by his side, sticking his nose through the bushes. Please, honey, let's go back over the mountain. I'm sure we can find a good den for the winter. Maybe we missed a spot. Mrs. Spot, those boulders have knocked down so many trees that there's nowhere left to hide. Once they decided to build that highway, our home was doomed. But honey, we can't live without pe with people. We can't live without them either. They've taken our home, now I'm taking one of theirs. Think of Baby Bear. It's not safe for him to spend the winter in somebody's basement. What if we're found? People aren't sensible like bears. They won't come back till, to the den until the nightfall. But then we'll be deep in hibernation in the ground under their den. They won't even know we're there. Polar Bear would have been surprised if he had been watching the back of the house at that moment. Goldilocks had, had left the house, but she hadn't gone to her bus stop. She too had been waiting for her parents to leave. As soon as her mom drove away, she snuck back to the house and entered through the back door where she had left her mom. Goldie liked school and never played hooky before, but today she had an important reason. She belonged to the hair raising book club, and just yesterday she received the latest book in the mail. Return of the monster's forward sure to be the best one yet, and she couldn't wait to read it. She had loved all the monsters books. How could she be ex expected to sit in school when her new book was waiting at home? Besides her classmate, Mary Carcheri, had probably read the whole book last night and would be blabbing the, the ending to everyone. Goldie raced up to her room, forgetting to lock the back door behind her. She passed through her bedroom, grabbed the book from her nightstand, and ducked into the crawl space behind the, her clothes closet. She kept a flashlight there, especially for reading scary stories. If you know so much about people, how are we going to get into their den? People are stupid, that's how. They have so many holes leading to their den that someone always leaves one open. Let's go check. Three bears and a wolf are the lawn and onto the front porch. So now it's relieved. Everything is locked up tight, but Papa Bear headed around the back, however, Soon found the door Goldie had left open. Come on! As soon as they were inside, he closed the door with a swipe. Upstairs, Goldie jumped at the sound, but sadly it was just her imagination. She returned to her book. The monsters were digging their way out of the coal mine in which they'd been buried in the return of the monsters under the night. How do we get to the basement? She hated being in this house. It smelled strange. She wanted to hide. We've got all day. Let's explore first. I've always wanted to see one of these human beds. Now's our chance. Yeah, Pop, let's check it out. If you hold your nose, it's not so bad in here. Well, let's start at the top and work our way down. Follow me. He bounded down the hall and up the stairs. He loved the way his sharp claws dug into the carpet. Baby Bear jumped onto the railing and shined up until he banged his head on the knob at the top. His mother lifted him down and gently prodded him along the hall. Papa Bear ran through the first open doorway into the bathroom. When his feet hit the, hit the tile floor, he slid all the way across the room and bounced off the toilet. <laughs> Papa Bear was still rubbing the lump on his head when his son crashed into him from behind. Only cautious Mama Bear came in without falling. This was the scariest book yet, the spooky story, and being home was really getting to me. I swear I could hear noises coming from the bathroom. What's this room for, Pop? Why is the floor so slippery? Uh, oh, this is where people drink, son. They don't even have to go outside. Oh. Um, I don't smell any fish in it. Too bland. Not cold enough. Give me fresh mountain stream any day. I think it's great. Water, right in your den. People have it made. Maybe this time they've returned to my house. It looked like the monsters would terrorize the mall this time. Goldie was terrified, but she reminded herself that no one knew she was there. Maybe if she stayed still, water was out there. Whatever was out there would go away. She shut, her flash, she shut off her flashlight and sat miserably in the dark, hugging her knee. Startled there was getting around the back of the cars facing on the top. Then they began to calm down. Awesome, Pop. That handle makes the little waterfall so that the water's always fresh. He pushed the lever again. Please stop doing that. What is wrong with this person? Why are there two people? Baby Bear was down 
bouncing around the bathroom, popping every handle and lever he, he could find. When he started the shower, all three bears gaped in amazement. Indoor rain. I can't believe it. People are so smart. You mean dumb son? They have everything from outdoors in here. They're done. Yet, they go off and leave it empty all day. Let's check some of the other rooms. Maybe they're laid down in the hall. They hold these beds. They look around the arm. He didn't know what to make of all these television TVs. But the bed looks so soft. He scrambled up for him. Then he goes. Then he gets the floor. He has a smaller version of himself. He looked at the teddy bear. He didn't get no spawn. He was huh? batting at Jimmy with his paws when his parents shuffled into the room. Look, Pop, they like us. Here's a fake cub. It looks almost like me. I told you, they have everything from outside in here, even bears. But none of it says good. That bear just sits there all day. What good is he? Goldie was becoming almost as curious as she was frightened. She heard woofing noises, shuffling footsteps, groaning and screams. What was going on? She crept across the cross space and put her eye against the crack in the door. She could see part of her bed through the open closet door. Sitting on it, sitting on it was the cutest bear cub she had ever seen. Aww. It looked a lot like Teddy, her dear stuffed bear. Not that she still played with stuffed animals. She was far too grown up for that. It was just that Teddy had been with her as long as she could remember, so she kept him around. Goldie was so excited to see a bear cub that she almost burst out of the crawl space for a closer look. But just then, her view was blocked by something big and hairy. There was a grown bear, too. As Pop of her crossed the room, Goldie caught sight of Mama Bear standing timidly in the doorway. Three bears. The whole situation seemed strangely familiar to Goldie. Maybe she had read something similar in her hair raven book. Maybe they were bounded from the bed into the closet. Goldie thought he had spotted her, but he was just exploring. Pop? What are these for? Be happy we have hair, son. People have to use this stuff to protect themselves from the weather. Did we come here to find a den or not? We're wasting the whole day. You don't even know if there's a spot for us here. I'm going downstairs to look in the basement. Come on, son. We, Mom was right. We had our fun, but we still need some places to spend the winter. Follow me. When they were gone, Goldie crept from her hiding place in, and listened at the top of the stairs. The basement door was ajar, and she heard the bear squeeze through the barrel, the squeeze through the barrel down the steps. The three bears stumbled into a huge room packed with old toys, broken furniture, bicycles, and, a po and piles of books and magazines. Mama Bear rubbed her paws on the concrete floor. We can't dig into this. This is even harder than the rest of the house. We can't stay here. Oh. Mama Bear was ashamed. She had, she, he'd been sure that there was bare earth under the people's house, but there was not one corner into which he could dig. He knew that he and Mama Bear could survive the winter with little food and shelter, but he wasn't so sure about Baby Bear. Meanwhile, Goldie kept leaning further and further through the basement door, trying to see what the bears were up to. At least she le at last she leaned too far, and down the stairs she tumbled. The noise made Papa Bear and Mama Bear rear, rear up and growl fiercely. between <laughs> Baby Bear and the steps, but when they saw the little girl, they... They dropped down on all fours. For a moment, no one moved. Goldie wasn't hurt, just a little dazed. Baby Bear squeezed through his protective parents and nudged Goldie with his snout. His cold nose tickled her, and she, and she laughed. <laughs> Baby Bear nudged her again. He reached out slowly, <laughs> keeping one eye on his parents, and scratched him behind the ear. He loved it and pressed her fingers for more. Let's leave. This is one. This one is harmless, but more people may come. Let's go well, see what we can. Come on, son. We're heading back outdoors to where we belong. This whole expedition was a terrible mistake. Goldie heard their sounds, but she had no idea what the bears were saying to each other. She only knew she liked to scratch and cuddle. 
baby bear forever. And mom, mom, pop, I love you, but this hibernation stuff is not for me. That's that was fine for you, old bear. When you were kids, there was plenty of wilderness, and you could peer down in a hole and sleep a few months away each year. But things are different now. I've got to learn how to live with people. This girl likes me, and I like to stay right here for the winter. But what will you eat? People have to eat too. I bet that, like everybody else, they can do it right in this den. The girl will take care of me. I know it. This, in the spring, you and Dad and I will look for a new place to live. Goldie sensed that something exciting was about to happen. She got up slowly and the baby bear lowered her legs. Goldie didn't think bears could cry, but Mama Bear looked like she might. The two big bears trugged up and trugged up the steps and were gone. Goldie heard the back door slam and she and baby bear were alone. She knew she must keep at least for the winter for winter. Her crawl space, it would be perfect. It was warm and dry. Her parents never went in there, and she could let Baby Bear out into her room at night. That winter was the happiest of Goldie's life. She and Baby Bear played every night. She ran into very short by five months. When she went to the room, they snuggled together, and Mrs. Moss was pleased to see Goldie so happy. But they were also a little worried. Her appetite seemed to have increased tremendously. The fridge was always empty. She spent a lot of time in her room and she snored very loudly when she slept. Family doctor gave Goldie a room checkup and told her parents to not worry at school. At school, Goldie started in ecology.